go long on Asian Paints, go long on CESC. A lot of longs out there. Mayuresh Joshi joins in with his thoughts on the markets and specific ideas as well. Mayuresh, you know, can't take our eyes away why, uh, in, what, in what's happening to subsets. And, you know, as strong as PSU banks are, I think the pocket that has stood out for me are the brokerage stocks. Brokerage stroke NBFC stocks. Almost every single name has a story to itself. Every single name is doing well. Uh, be it a JM Financial, be it Edelweiss, be it Motilal Oswal, IIFL, everything has done well. What are your thoughts here? What would your recommendation to your clients be? Morning, Neeraj. Uh, oh, yes, I think uh, these brokerage stock strokes and BFCs have uh, done exceptionally well. And again, I think it's largely laid out due to the fact that the volumes probably on the exchanges have probably started uh, going up and inching upwards. Uh, having said that, probably the yields that you're probably witnessing from the core uh, securities business is uh, improving as well. So I think this is the primary factor that is probably getting laid out uh, for the outperformance that you're probably witnessing. And again, I think the kind of branching out that a whole host of these companies have probably done, whether that into house mortgage businesses, asset financing, I think those businesses are also holding up pretty well. So largely I think uh, both these streams expected to do well if uh, the reforms that you're probably witnessing in the Indian markets continue and the government probably does whatever is expected out of them over the next few quarters, we'll see the buoyancy in the capital markets continue and the other subsets that these entities are operating out of do pretty well as well. So I think it was an expected reaction in terms of numbers uh, coming out uh, better than what analysts were expecting. But I think the numbers should hold up if these volumes basically hold up in the capital markets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the view on the brokerage stocks and all of them have done reasonably well for themselves in, this, in trade the last few days. Uh, Himang, what did really well uh, were some of these you know, specialty chemical companies. GHCL, good numbers, the stock shot up in trade. Naveen Florin, good numbers, the stock shot up in trade. Uh, I don't know whether you have coverage here, but do you have some thoughts here on this space? Yeah, Neeraj. In fact, uh, we have a coverage on SRF, which also falls into that category. Right, of course. And uh, we have seen that, uh, particularly Naveen Florin and SRF, the, the category in which they are focusing on the fluorochemicals, uh, you know, there is a decent growth of about 18 to 20 percent, uh, and the margin growth has also has been equally good. Uh, what has happened is that in US, they have imposed a huge anti-dumping duty on uh, some of these uh, products from China and which is what is driving the uh, margins uh, and the volume for some of these companies. Also, uh, you know, both Naveen Florin and SRF have expanded their product portfolio. Earlier, they were focusing more on the agrochemical space. Now, they are also looking at pharma, and they have put additional capacity. So, what we believe is that in the current environment, you will see a volume growth in excess of 20% and a margin uh, of about 18 20%. And uh, particularly this quarter, if you see Naveen Florin, the, the uh, growth in the profitability has been more than 40 percent. We expect a similar growth to happen in SRF also. So I think uh, for a, let's say one, one and a half year kind of a perspective, there is more upside for uh, SRF in particular. Mm. Well, a couple of key earnings today and six nifty names. DRL, Ambuja, Z, Bharti Infra, ACC and Maruti are going to be coming out with their earnings just today as well. Mayuresh, out of this lot, what is it that you would keenly look out for? No, I think everything has to be watched out for Aisha. But again, I think uh, the expected lines again are how the volume growth for Maruti will be and expected again to be a little bit muted this time around, 2 to 3 uh, percent. What happens with realizations and margins because of the currency that we've witnessed over the last few weeks, I think that will be key and the management commentary thereof. Z again, I think, is one number that I'll keenly watch out for in terms of both the top line growth as well as the management commentary in terms of both how the ad deals are shaping up as well as their key subscription markets. Again, largely the picture related to the losses of the sports business is well known to the markets. So I think the management commentary on the outlook specifically towards the subscription side of the business and growth in the ad reels is something to be watched out for. So largely I think uh, Z is something that I'll keenly watch out for. But again, I think uh, TBS Motors, Maruti Suzuki, volumes more or less known. But I think the management commentary related to margin improvement, what happens with realizations, going forward and general business environment in terms of volume growth for the second half of this fiscal will hold the key in terms of the re-rating of these stocks. Among the two more important names out of the list of earnings which are coming out today, that's Maruti and ICICI Bank. What is your prima facie expectation? 
See, in case of Maruti, we are looking at about 14% kind of a top line growth. Uh, it will not be a blockbuster quarter, but, uh, you know, everything is going for Maruti, you know, in terms of uh, the better monsoon, the GST, some kind of a stability in the margin, and the yen, which was not uh, going in favor of them, we've seen some kind of an improvement there as well. And the overall growth outlook that the management has given is pretty good at about 12-14% kind of volume growth. So, uh, you know, yes, the overall growth would be about 12-14% on the top line. Uh, operating profit margins are going to be about 15-16%. Uh, we have an extremely positive outlook on Maruti from a one-year perspective. That's great. And ICSA Bank, I mean, um, what could we expect from them considering they too have grappled with the NPA quality stress? See, absolutely. Last quarter also, if you look at the numbers, they were not that, uh, you know, impressive. Mm. Uh, it, it seems that, uh, you know, most of the NPL pain is not behind them. But since we have seen the entire financial vertical has seen some kind of a re-rating, particularly the insurance and the AMC and the, you know, related kind of work, I think people are not going to take it negatively. Same is what we saw in case of Axis Bank. So I think uh, even if the numbers are not up to the mark, uh, overall because of the kind of momentum that we are seeing on the retail side, particularly in the NBFC and related side, uh, mm. people would take it positively. Mm. Now a few stocks, just before I get to Hemang on, 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 on the cement names and some ideas as well. Kunal Botra, a quick word on two insurance names which did well. I mean, Max Financial Services and AB Nuvo, which has been on a run, so to say. Yes, uh, Niraj, I think, uh, you know, AB Nuvo is, is uh, you know, one chart to look at. Even Max Financial Services, I think it's been trending well, uh, you know, uh, you know, not uh, not not in future. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, not really uh, in terms of a trading bet. But I think for AB Nuvo, I think the charts are spectacular. Uh, you know, the stock is, uh, you know, trending quite beautifully. In the last you know two three months, it's uh, you know given a breakout in almost uh, you know uh, regular periods or regular intervals. In the last two three months, it's been uh, you know successively uh, you know even the charts uh, you know breaking uh, you know short term resistances as well. So I would be you know pretty optimistic on AB Nuvo particularly, and uh, you know I believe that even from a short term perspective, I think the stock uh, you know should probably trend higher from current levels. Okay, now uh, Himang, uh, a word on. The cement names and I think uh, in a manner of speaking the outlook for Grasim also seems to be fairly healthy. Absolutely. Uh, for cement uh, what we have been saying is that if you look at the Ultratech numbers they were really blow out and uh, the outlook that they've given in the con call is extremely positive. So but we expect... ACC Ambuja may not have such a quarter, right? ACC Ambuja uh, we are looking at about 4% kind of a top line growth but you will see about 300 to 400 basis points improvement in the margin. Okay. Okay. So and, and there's a huge gap if you look at the valuation. So there's going to be some kind of a catch up as far as Ambuja and ACC are concerned. Now talking about Grasim, see apart from their stake in Ultratech, uh, recently one of the largest VSF players had done a con call and they have given an outlook which is extremely positive for the VSF in particular. What they are saying is that the overall demand uh, outlook continues to be good. In China, particularly, the inventory levels have fallen from 20 days to 10 days, and the prices have actually gone up almost about 18% in the last about four to five months. So that is extremely positive for VSF manufacturers, mm. and there are new, no new capacities which are coming up. So I mm. think you could expect, uh, you know, good uh, reaction to Grasim because of that. Because a, your, you know, cement holding is doing extremely well in the form of Ultratech, and you are seeing positive outlook on the VSF part. So we expect. Uh, Grassing to do extremely well, even from a short-term perspective. That's a great observation. Mayuresh, very quickly, uh, what is it that you're expecting from cement majors? Could ACC Ambuja replicate what an Ultratech did? And is it already in the stock price? Again, I think the large opinion is that the realizations will improve because energy prices have been low, Petco prices have been low. So the volume growth should be quite reasonable for both ACC and Ambuja. I think the bottom-down trickle effect should largely be evident because of energy prices going low, realizations improving on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So yes, stable set of numbers expected from uh, ACC and Ambuja. And specifically for Grafsim, again, I think with utilization levels uh, remaining extremely high for the EBSF unit. And again, I think the chemical unit that has got merged into Grafsim, I think the utilization levels thereof will improve the operating leverage. The only issue becomes because of lower crude prices, the polyester fiber prices have become so low in China that Grassim basically has to do its competitive advantages basically on the specialty fiber business that it is possibly embarking upon. 
and has a market leadership position. So utilization remaining high. Again, I think a discount to what we're holding at Cotton Ultratech with uh, extremely good numbers coming from Ultratech. I think that holds good for Grassim from a medium to long term perspective. So again, I think Grassim is expected to do well both in terms of its VSF and chemical units performing well. Mm. About a minute and a half left. Uh, and amongst other stocks which did well, actually, uh, uh, a quick perspective here, CK, 50 seconds, uh, three stocks which stood out uh, yesterday, GHCL, JM Financial, Max Financial, which one would you choose? Which was the second one? JM Financial. Okay. I think if you look at GHCL, it's been on a very good uptrend and I think the results have helped and uh, there has been clearly an anticipation as well about the results and I think there is consistency in the buying pattern. My expectation is that the uptrend would continue to roll higher. Maybe about 240, 250 seems to be pretty easy to be achieved uh, for the stock and uh, holders should continue to remain in that stock. JM Financial, pretty decent move across this, uh, you know, entire broking space and uh, has decent pedigree. It had gone into a bit of a rest, but if you look at the charts, you'll find that an upside bias has been maintained quite consistently. And now, uh, last week, I think uh, all the broking stocks were in firm demand. Mm. I think JM has had a pretty decent up move, so should continue higher. Okay. Max Financial... Right. Is in the bit of the news and should probably continue a bit more. Okay, 20 seconds to pre open session and let's establish the trade setup for you. Uh, the SGX Nifty is indicating a flattish start. We don't have too many result reactions left, so to say, not too many large numbers which came out post market hours. So a bunch of mid caps and small caps could be reacting and we'll mark some of those as well. But watch out for the PSU banks. I think they've had a fabulous move in trade yesterday. Let's see if that continues. Watch out for some of the specialty chemical companies. They could well have a decent enough outing and a bunch of mid caps and small caps. So Merck, JK Paper, uh, you know, there's a slew of numbers which stood out and could well have a very, very interesting outing in the session today. But here are the first trades on the pre-open session. The Nifty flat, the Sensex too in all probability would be a flattish start. Don't expect the mid caps and the small caps to really have a gung-ho first five minutes of trade at 9.15. But later on, maybe they'll pick up. I think these are erratic rates. This will change in a bit. Uh, bring up uh, what PNB, SBI, BOB are doing. I think those had massive days of trade, massive day of trade yesterday, PNB in particular, and another half a percent. Well, you never know how much it will be. All likelihood, PSU Bank should continue. Ahead of the numbers, Marty Suzuki in the first tick is showing a mild uptick. But suffice to say, these rates will change. I don't see too many gyrations right now, not too many result reactions seen either. So let's give these rates a chance to settle down and then be able to talk more about it. Infosys has this unnatural downtick. Maybe that will change. Yeah, and uh, the currency stats are absolutely stable, just marginally in the negative right now. 67.40 thereabouts is where the rupee is. But earnings today, DRL, Ambuja, Z, Bharti Infra, ACC and Maruti are of which DRL and Maruti, I guess, would be of utmost importance. 6% of the nifty weightage, remember, is going to declare the numbers today. Bajaj Finsa, Bajaj Finance, Mahindra CEIE, IDFC Bank, Coromandel, Tata LXC, TVS Motors, First Source, slew of mid-cap earnings today. But let's look out for some of the earnings reactions then. Canara Bank, strong numbers coming in there and more importantly, the management commentary has been pretty strong as well in terms of what they hope to clock in by way of recoveries as well as um, NPA is going forward. Though you're not seeing anything meaningful in Canara Bank. In fact, it's down 2.3% as we speak. Uh, weak numbers then from Supreme Petro as well as State Bank of Mysore. To look out for these as well. But Ajay joins in to talk about the three stocks to look out for. Ajay? Good morning, Aisha. Aisha, Maruti will be one stock uh, to watch out for. In fact, the biggest uh, one uh, for two reasons. Not only the results are slated uh, in today's session and dealers believe that the results actually could be on the positive side. But also just moments back, a BOJ has actually come out and announced a massive fiscal stimulus. Uh, so that's something important to watch out for. It's not a monetary stimulus. They're not giving free money out as earlier thought in the form of helicopter money. But actual spending will be done in the economy, which is actually good for yen. And that's a correlation which Maruti also has. So this is one stock to watch out for. It's already opened higher. Uh, 
the dealers do believe that this is a buy ahead of the results. Apart from that, uh, Navbharat Venture, which commissioned the Zambian Power uh, Unit uh, last evening, the news came on the exchanges and management was there on our channel moments back. Now, you know, it's not very widely known yet, but uh, this power unit in Zambia was a big drag on the balance sheet of Navbharat Ventures. And now that it's commissioned, it will start ad adding significant amount of earnings uh, to the company. And it's a big positive. The stock actually may move up from here or get re-rated in a way, according to analysts. And the last one is VRL Logistics. Today, the finance minister is meeting all the finance ministers of different states and today's meeting is very crucial in that sense. Any progress on that will be seen as a major step towards the passage of a, a GST bill and hence uh, a lot of these stocks will also be on the trader radar this, uh, this session. Thanks a lot for that uh, and uh, Ajay had a very interesting house view on Adani transmission. Pranay Johnson with what CLSA has to say on Adani transmission. Well, they've initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating and they like it because it is the best play when it comes to private uh, business model, when it comes to, uh, you know, the transformation capacity. And they have it at about 5,000 uh, circuit kilometers or about 12,630 uh, mega megavolt uh, capacity. Uh, a couple of reasons why they like it uh, more on the private side than power grid is because uh, this is uh, relatively under -owned. Also, they've recently won about three competitively bid transmission projects at an equity internal rate return of about 14 to 18 percent which is bang in the range of uh, power grid and that validates its potential this could actually increase its circuit uh, capacity by about 27 percent in the next two to three years also it has had a very solid operational track record with uh, uh, available capacity or uh, transmission availability factor of more than about 99 and a half percent so they uh, are recommending to buy this uh, because of the improved clarity on the power sector and they expect the book value to grow uh, double digit uh, at about 23% on a compounded basis over the next two years. Profits could grow by about 32% and also with the past dues of about 530 crores coming in, this could significantly boost uh, the book value. So they expect the stock to actually double in three years time on all these uh, factors. On valuation terms, it's trading sub its book value right now, one times FI18 price to book value. And they also have a deleveraging plan. So the debt equity is going to stand at about 1.8 times uh, next year. They have a target price of about 55. So they see a 46% upside from the current level. Hmm. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Pranay. And that stock, uh, duly so, up in the session today. Mayuresh, you have thoughts here, Adani transmission? Unfortunately, Neeraj, I think I don't cover this one. No problem. Himang, are you, do you cover it? Uh, no, even okay. I don't. <laughs> we'll leave it. No problem. But Himang, you do cover PTC Financial Services, PTC India Financial Services. Yes, we do cover that. And what we are saying is that uh, the entire NBFC spectrum, we have seen that there is so much of action happening. And uh, this company, though small, is growing at about 30% uh, plus. We are focusing on the uh, you know renewable energy segment, uh, which is growing at a very decent uh, pace because of the kind of thrust that the government has given. And uh, interesting thing about PTC uh, India Financials is that the uh, the net margins or the net spread is about 5.5 to 5.75 percent, uh, and this is happening uh, on a return on equity of about 18.5 percent. So we believe that on a smaller uh, you know uh, loan book, the overall growth is going to be 30 percent plus with decent ROE and decent spread. So uh, currently it is available at about 1 to 1.1 uh, next year price to book and we think that it can give 25-30% uh, kind of an uptick in the current environment. Mm. That's interesting to get in some views on PFS. Of course, that is a stock that Hemang is betting big on. The other one, Hemang, uh, a Triveni turbine. Interesting one here. What is the investment rationale? See, what is happening is that it's, it's, it's the largest uh, steam turbine uh, maker, particularly in, uh, from 30 to 100 megawatts. And for the larger ones, they have a JV uh, with another MNC company. Uh, about 70% of the revenue is coming from the, uh, the turbine and 30% from the after-sale services uh, and related part. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, the entire use, user industry, particularly sugar, chemicals, cement, uh, etc., is showing a good amount of traction. The capacity utilization for the user is increasing from about 65-70% to almost about 80-85%. So we believe that in the next about two or three quarters, you could see some kind of a capex uh, you know, happening across the user industry, which would be a big uh, boost for a company like this. And it's available at a you know, PE of about 9 to 10 uh, forward uh, you know, earnings. So there is a case for a decent upside from current levels for a company like Triveni Turbine. Mm. Okay, so 
those are a couple of investment ideas as well. Mayuresh, uh, from the broader end of the spectrum, I mean, I, we've discussed heavy chemicals, we've discussed uh, brokerages and insurance companies. Anything that stands out for you? What, what has been the top uh, recommendation or a buying favorite for you uh, in your accounts uh, as a result of results or otherwise? Generally, I think uh, as, as a business model, what you're liking is Navkar Corporation uh, from a long-term perspective. Uh, again, the company is largely into CFS operation in one of the largest operators in JNPT. Uh, it has also opened a new ICD at WAPI, and that ICD probably is going to account for almost 27% of the volumes towards JNPT. So what was happening till this point of time was the rail transport and the road transport. I think there were two divergent uh, units specifically going into JNPT. Navkar has uh, better rail connectivity, but because of uh, the non-existence of an ICD at WAPI, a whole host of road transport was probably getting through. With the ICD at WAPI coming through, I think a whole host of these volumes that they were not able to cater through will start coming through. They will also be looking at bulk commodities, which can include fiber, scrap, marbles, and that can have a telling effect in terms of how the volume growth will happen over the next couple of years. In FY16, we've basically seen a volume growth around 15%. The number of trains that they've operated for the whole year was around 765. They've done almost 220 trains uh, in the first quarter of this fiscal. So largely, I think improvement in volumes expected because of the 234% expansion that they're doing in the JNPT capacity as well. And that, that will largely affect volume growth as well. Again, from an earnings perspective, my own take is that the top line growth of 30 to 33 odd percent of the next two years is not ruled out. The trickle down effect in terms of bottom line growth should be around 31 percent with raw material costs or input costs expected to remain benign. The beta margin should sustain around 40 to 43 percent and that will have a telling effect in terms of the earnings per share improving to around 11 and a half rupees by FY18. So largely I think the story is looking very very interesting. The only risk element that remains with the stock is the foreign debt of around 194 odd crores and if there are any tweaking that the Indian Railways probably does and the tax exemptions going off in the next few years. But largely I think it looks like a compounding story going forward. So again investors can look at this stock at declines in a staggered manner in the next few weeks or months and probably hold it on for the next two years. The stock in my opinion should give a very reasonable amount of return in that point of time. Okay, flat as she goes for the SJX Nifty, 8644 is what it's indicating. But then again, the market is uh, famous for the last fortnight or so to take uh, a different turn and shape really in the latter part of the trading session. Quiet is how we've started on a daily basis nowadays. But lots of other mid-cap earnings and some of the interesting ones, of course, could be Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServe is something that the street is going to look out for, IDFC as well, Tata LXC, TVS Motors and United States spirits amongst some of the key ones. Tata LXC, Himang, um, do you track this one firstly? Uh, no, not really. You don't. Mayurish, would you have any opinion on Tata LXC, a much fancied stock? Uh, could the earnings justify the stock moves? No, again, Aisha, looking at the business model and the kind of growth that we've probably seen uh, in, in the embedded solution business, uh, my own take is that the kind of run-up that you probably witness in the stock is probably not justifying the kind of valuation that the stock is deriving at this point of time, specifically considering the core business vertical that it basically operates out of. So largely, in my opinion, I think the stock is looking fairly valued at this point of time. So again, I think uh, IT as a sector generally should probably underperform, at least for the next couple of quarters. Okay, let's just recap then the trading ideas before we hit opening bell for this morning. And CK Narayan, he's got a buy strategy on Reliance Capital with a target of 438. United Spirits ahead of it, his, its uh, earnings also becomes a buy for CK with a stop at 2400, target of 2550 intraday. Siddharth Bhamre and he's got a buy on Bank of India, target 120, stop 103. And a buy on Apollo Tires, target at 173. And a stop loss of 157 is what he's recommending on this one. Kunal Botra, buy on Z with a stop loss at 468, target 484. And a buy on first source with a target of 58, stop 49. Okay, let's try and nail it down to that one top trading idea for the day. Kunal, uh, what is it? Is it first source? Is it Asian Paints or is it something else? Uh, uh, Neeraj, it's the first stock which I recommended, that's Z. Uh, I, I would look out for a target closer to 484 for the day and stop loss of 469, I mentioned oh. earlier. 
Okay, it's it's completely different, but Z Entertainment it is uh, from Kunal's. And remember, the results come out today. That's about a percent weightage on the index. The results come out today. Watch out for this one. CK, your top idea for the day? Long and Reliance Capital for 424, stop 418, targeting 435. Okay, CK Narayan's top call is Reliance Capital. Do watch out for this one. Had a sparkling day yesterday, a target of 438. Siddharth, what about you? Your top idea? <coughs> Sun Pharma would be my top idea, which was uh, 855 idea also, uh, with a target of around 850 and stop loss somewhere around 785. Mm. Okay, let's tell you about the key things to look out for in trade today. Of course, Nifty earnings, heavy day, Dr. Reddy, Zambuja, Z, Bharti, Infratel, ACC and Maruti are all going to declare their numbers. And some strong earnings reactions. So look out for Canara Bank, Merck, JK Paper, Rane Engine, Hitachi. These came out with a strong set of earnings. On the flip side, weak earnings from Supreme Petro. You had Jagatjeet, you had uh, State Bank of Mysore and Ganesha Ecosystems, which came out with some weak earnings. Morgan Stanley has been a buyer in Sudarshan Chemicals as well as Saturn Credit Care. So look out for that as well. And CLSA has initiated a coverage in Adani Transmission. They see a 46% upside, no less, in this one. So look out for transmission this very well could be a stock to watch out for let's quickly then map what the global mood is like as Japan has talked about further quantitative easing and uh, fiscal stimulus really in the economy to a very sizable quantum you're not quite seeing any recovery really come in in the entire Asian market Japan is status quo it's still down about 250 odd points for the Nikkei Hong Kong is holding up by about a good 1%, so a good 200 odd point move. Shanghai as well has recovered from where it started off, so about a four tenths of a percent move is what you're seeing there. The FOMC meet also kick starts today, and uh, well, all expectations are that the Fed is going to stand pat, but yes, about half a percent or a bit of a negative move coming in across US equities after making record highs all of last week is how we've shut shop. The SGX Nifty though, indicating an absolutely flight, flat start, but at the cost of repeating ourselves, uh, who knows what shape the market really takes uh, intraday today. Uh, remember yesterday we left it off at 8600 and a comfortable close above that level. So let's see whether we stick by to that mark. Starting tick, yes, 86.33 is where we're currently at. Absolutely flat to start off the day. Let's uh, quickly mark the movers then in trade. And uh, first, a couple of earnings reactions. So Canara Bank, Merck, JK Paper, Rane Engine, they should be reacting to their numbers. Canara Bank, irrespective of the strong management commentary, that seems to uh, have failed to enthuse the street. Although you also have to price in the fact that Canara Bank has been a consistent runner as well. Each day that the PSBs has held out, Canara Bank has won, you know, has been one of the top five names to hold out. So today it's a bit tempered for Canara Bank as we speak. Merck, JK Paper, Rane Engine, KG Denim, Hitachi Home are some of the others which should be reacting to their strong numbers. JK Paper, Hitachi both have made a very smart move there. Some weak earnings from Supreme Petro, Jagajit Industries, State Bank of Mysore. So look out for these. Supreme Petro tanks by about almost 6%. State Bank of Mysore, flat start coming in there. Uh, some stocks going ex-dividend. So look out for Imami, Gati, GSK, etc. So these, of course, have gone ex-dividend. You also have earnings today. Dr. Reddy's, Ambuja, Z, Bharti Infra, ACC, as well as Maruti, which are going to come out with their numbers. So look out for this entire bunch. I would definitely want to see what Maruti is up to ahead of its numbers. Cement, of course, is going strong into its earnings. Maruti, as well, starts off mildly positive. 45.60 is where the stock is currently. Lots of important mid-cap earnings from Bajaj Finserv to Bajaj Finance. You've got PI Industries, IDFC, IDF IDFC Bank. You've got Tata LXC, TVS Motors, a first source, United Spirits, Ajanta Pharma. Look out for them. They're going to be extremely actively tracked. Definitely want to check in on Sudarshan Chemicals as well, considering Morgan Stanley Asia has picked up a chunk there, as also for Saturn Credit Care. And this has been an extreme buzzer of late. Saturn Credit starts off with a gain of about almost 1.6%. And that's what else is moving. Mm. Bring up Adani transmission. Just wonder if uh, that pre-opened rate was just a mere indication. Yes, it was because I think it's moved up even further. So the CLSA note really leading to a surge there. 10% higher for Adani transmission on that CLSA note. Good going there. 
KG Denim, good results, up about 17% in trade. Sesa Shai Paper moves up 16% uh, after the 20% of move yesterday. So, well, come out with good numbers and the market continues to reward you. It's good going there. And I just want to quickly see what a GHCL, Naveen Florine are doing. A GHCL pausing for breath. Naveen Florine should come up on your screen as well after that big move yesterday. Pausing today. And then the three brokerage names, uh, Motila Loswal, JM Financial, Edelweiss. Edelweiss, marginally higher in trade, so fresh highs, JM Financial, fresh highs. Motila Loswal, 477, a bit of a pause yet again after two big moves that we've seen already. Okay, so the going seems to be okay so far. In a bit, we'll get the management of Indian Oil Corporation, so you can't afford to miss that. I think that's probably the, the hottest space right now and amongst the managements, the hottest managements as well. So do watch out for that interaction coming up in about five or six minutes from now. But, uh, but just before we wrap up this discussion, that is of course uh, what you will get in about five or six minutes, the re-rating that has happened in all marketing companies. So, uh, so CK, quick thoughts, any stock that catches your eye, any trade that catches your eye? Well, I think markets have opened flat and uh, so you'll have to look at it on a stock specific basis only. I think a couple of them which are trading better, uh, one of them is uh, most certainly India Bull Housing. Post the results, uh, the stock has recovered nicely and today is seeking to build. So 745, 750 is its current range and I think I would look to buy it in that range with a 10 rupee stop loss and expect a target till about 770. Another stock uh, which seems to be you know making further strides, Madison Sumi has been on a bit of a roll. Uh, uh, earlier target of ours was about 325. It's currently at about 321. I'm inclined to raise the target price to about 337 and continue to hold on long or create fresh longs at the current juncture. Mm. Mayurish, I'm not quite sure if you track Saturn Credit Care, but the street seems to be extremely interested in this one. Again, unfortunately, I said don't track this one. Okay, Mayuresh. Good chatting with you as always. Thanks much for taking the time out and speaking with us today. Thank you so much. That's the view from Mayuresh Joshi from Angel. Quite a start, much unexpected lines, marginal outperformance from the broader markets, about a three tenths of a percent move coming in for the small cap index. Just want to quickly check in on what some of the FNO buzzers are. OBC is the top slot today, so 